Hello, good morning, welcome back. I'm Claire, this is Purple Poppy, and with the courier collecting parcels and the postman coming and Boo not being happy about it and all sorts of other problems, this is attempt three at the process video for the file bag folder that I did for my happiness in crafting design project for May that many of you said you wanted to see. So, because it's quite a long process, I have done a few things as you can see, plus of course it is the third attempt already. Oh, now there's a giant fly, for goodness sake. Um, so, first things first, what we are basically making is an overgrown book. Because if you look at piece one, this would be your front cover of a standard journal. This would be your spine. And this would be your back cover. Okay? So those three pieces is just a normal hardback journal cover. Okay? Now... I have done these slight this is a four okay I folded in half and if you look at the cover I've done it slightly oversized because as you know I like my covers to be oversized so if I can find my ruler I know you like measurements the front and back covers are just over eight and a half inches tall by just under six and a quarter inches wide. That's those two pieces there. The two spines are exactly the same. So the standard spine is, well again, it's um, marginally over one and a half inches and it will be the exact same, just over eight and a half inches tall. And that's your normal standard hardcover Okay, now I used two A4 pieces of book board for this. You need a really good solid board. Okay, you can use flimsier card for your internal upstands and obviously normal printed paper for decoration, but you do need good strong board. Okay. But then to get the bag added on to the back cover, because obviously, look, this would be the front. I know that's upside down. Don't worry about that for the moment. That's the front. That's the spine. That's the back cover. I've then added a second spine. Okay. And that is exactly the same size as that one. So it's just over one and a half inches and just over eight and a half inches there and then we've got the flap for our bag it's exactly the same height obviously again and at this widest part it's just under three and a half and at the narrowest part there it's just over two inches and i have just cut a diagonal across there and then I flipped it over like you do for a tag and I've cut off that corner there. Um, and for those of you that want to know exactly, there is the piece that I cut off. Okay, so the triangle that I cut off is an inch and a half down and two inches across. Okay. So if you go in this way to one and a half, one and a half inches, and you come down to two inches and you join the points, you'll cut off that triangle, okay? And then obviously I repeated exactly, turn it over, exactly the same the other side, okay? I then, in the same way that you would with any journal cover, I taped all my joins, making sure that I had 
good fold room okay because we want it to fold and open and shut and exactly the same here okay and then i flipped it over and i covered it in paper now as you can see for this you need one two three five pieces of pattern paper you can have five exactly the same or you can have three for the outside and then two for the inside because on the outside we need to go long ways which is why we need three whereas on the inside we can go width ways which is why we only need two all right now i stuck these down in the normal way but then on the two spines i've applied wet glue on top a to help with cracking and b to give us a little bit extra support and now that that's dry what i'm going to do is i'm going to ink up this area so i'm going to ink it flat first of all okay and then i'm gonna bring it up and i'm gonna ink those corners or those folds whatever you want to say because you don't have to but that's what i did just to get some age to this okay there it just adds some age I'm going to do exactly the same here. Now, if you get this cracking that I did, that's because you folded it when the paper was still damp and you folded it too soon. Don't worry. These things happen. And as part of our decoration, we can cover that up. That's not a problem. It's annoying. But it's not a major problem okay and then bring it up and just ink your sides you see that back one there it cracked really badly but we will deal with that and i'll show you how okay so that's what i've done so far Sorry, turn it that way because the writing's up that way. That's what I've done so far. I have also done my upstand that goes here. And I'll show you how you do that. Because if you're not familiar with that, that can be a little bit of a pain. So what you need to do is you need to do multi. I did mine half inch. You could do a quarter inch if you wanted to. But I like the half inch. So you go half inch once, half inch twice, three times, four times, five times, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can I get an eleventh in there? Not really. Okay. Now, I never work out how many I need at this stage. I just do it. And what we need to do is we need to remember that we have a flat, an up, a down, a flat, an up, a down, a flat, an up, a down, a flat. So we are going to cut this off there. Okay. So trim it off. Hopefully you've got a straighter cutting hand than I have. If you've not made albums before this is how they make albums okay and then you're going to need to do like a concertina so you're going to fold that one over and then you're going to fold that one okay and then that one and then that one all the way across your piece of card okay and do your concertina folds fiddly but not hard 
Okay. And then your very last one back over. Okay. And now you've got this concertina. And you can see already that if that one's going to be flat, <coughs> I've actually folded it the wrong way. And that's why I usually glue it first. Sorry, take the notice. That's a, that's a, and then that one is the wrong way when it needs to come down that way. Right, that'll all make sense in a minute, don't worry. So you can see now we've got the flat, we've got the upstand, we've got the flat. See, I told you, it's just not been a good morning, really. It's going crazy. Right, there you go. So you've got upstand one, upstand two, upstand three. Yes? So we did half inch all the way across. Then turn it over, ignore the first one, and glue, oh, if you can get your glue to work, and glue the second one. Okay? Ignore the first one. Glue the second one and press it home. Okay. Fold your flat back. Ignore that one. Glue the second one. And fold it over. And press it home. Okay, and then bring it back and bring your flat back. Ignore that one, glue the second one. Okay, very repetitive. Turn it around this way so you can see. Okay, and fold it over, press it home. And fold it back. And now, if we turn it over, what we've got is we've got one, two, three. All right. Helps if you fold them backwards and forwards a few times. And there you go. That is what I just showed you there. The only difference is I've got a slightly wider line there. Okay? So they are the supports that you can put your files or pockets, whatever, onto. So, we now need to bring back our folder, our bag, whatever you want to call it, and we need to glue all of these edges round in exactly the same way that you would any other journal cover. And because we've got seams in our paper, I'm doing a section of paper at a time. Okay, use my score just to 
press in that fold and press that down okay that's that one obviously we need to cut this corner do that in a minute glue this piece And bring it home. Press it down. Spread our glue out. Score our folds. Okay. And then this last piece gets a little bit more tricky because it's shaped. So let's bring that first piece over like so and bring down our crease okay and then stop and go back the other way i found it was easiest to do the flap last okay bring that over Press it home. Again, obviously, we need to do that corner. We'll do that in due course. Press our score line. Do the next one. It's about time for a new bottle of glue. Press that home. Do your fold lines okay and then this piece here this shaped piece bring that over press that home as well and do your fold line okay now come down come down to this end here and you need to trim your corner now I always come away about an eighth of an inch and then trim okay take that top piece off and just leave your back piece behind plenty of glue and then just press in that little piece that you've left behind if you haven't got a fingernail then obviously use your bone folder or your score tool and just press that home so we've covered that one okay nice square edges right now some reason that is not sticking. Let's just get a bit more glue on there. Right. Now, on this one, do this side first. Okay, bring it over and you can see it will lift up. Press it home. like so and then this one exactly the same turn it around for you might be a bit easier to see okay and find your edge yep and press him home okay like so 
So again, we've got nice straight edges. And then on here, you need to get a little bit of glue under there. And then you need to glue this paper. Oh, I don't know what's going on with this glue. Sounds like a car party outside. Not a bad choice of music though, so that's something. Okay, press that home and then bring your corners up and over like so. Okay, so now it's all covered. What we're going to do now is obviously, first of all, we need to get rid of our white pieces. So let's get rid of our white edges. Get rid of those bits. Okay, so let's bring this down. Now we know that this spine is going to sit here. So we don't need to cover really all of that, but we do want it the want this paper underneath this. Okay, so I started on this long side first of all to see where my paper was going to run out. I thought that was obvious. So line it up to make sure that you've got it central. Make sure if you've got a directional paper that you've got them both running in the same direction. And then what I did was I glued, actually let's, yeah, no. I was going to ink it up, but I've changed my mind. So what I did then was I just, oh, I prayed for a glue pot that would work. Okay. But you don't want to go all the way because we need to trim up the shape of that tab. And I found the hardest thing of this project was not what you were doing, but it was making sure what order that you did it in. Okay, and I'll show you why. So line it up again. Where does that end? About there. Okay, and press that home. And if you can see, what I've managed to do is I've managed to get the paper into that second spine. Okay, but we've only stuck to about there so that we can still lift this end up. And the reason we want to lift this end up is because A, we want to tear this paper. Now, that's a, you know, judge that space and 
tear appropriately. Okay. Just to try and give yourself the shape going round. If you need to, trim it with your scissors. I mean, you can cut it all with scissors. It's just that you know, there you go, that I like to have the deckled edge. So again, line it up. Look roughly, get a good shape. See, and I missed that one. So again, I'm just going to trim it. And that will go like that. But before we go sticking this down, we want to make holes that we can hide our handles into. All right. So let's stand that up for a minute. Oh, and let's decide about our handles. Now you can see from here that we have got way too much paper, which is perfect. So if you trim off your paper, make sure you've got enough and do what you did on the shaped edge. Come in so it looks even, okay? Position it, get it even, come in that same amount and tear that off. Now that is the piece that goes there. You can put that down now if you choose to. It's entirely up to you. Shall we put it down so we don't lose it? Might make sense, might it? But then we do have to struggle with the glue again. Okay, so let's glue this down. We won't lose it. I'm gluing all the way around the edge. And then just get some nice spread in the middle. The right way round, Claire, would help. Line it up. Make sure it's even. And press in home. Okay. Now, I know that obviously we've got a join there. But that is where our spine's sitting. So we are never going to see the join. It doesn't matter. But that's why you need to be careful where you lay your papers down okay okay so that stuck him down so now we're going to make our handle okay lovely so my handle all i did was i cut a ruler's worth Pour a ruler's worth like that. I then folded it in like so. Okay, turn it over, turn it in again. not necessarily looking for it to meet because I'm going to strengthen it with a, another piece in a minute and obviously this is where you can decide whether you want to decorate it with paper and then I just folded it in half and folded a piece over like so okay and then you've got your fold line and you can just fold it back and then you've got your 
you've got your handle okay you can decide at this stage whether you want to put another piece of paper under there or whether you want to put some fabric on it for decoration okay entirely up to you because i've got paper on the table and not lace or ribbon i'm going to do mine with paper so i'm just going to glue that down i'm going to glue this down whoops like so and then I ran it around my finger so that it was nicely curved. And then if you line your paper up, and I made sure that I cut it just short of the width of the strap mainly to cover up the join secondly to make it that little bit stronger okay and then cover that up so you're covering up your seam Okay, and then that's obviously going on the inside. If you'd have done it with lace or ribbon, you would obviously have done it on the outside. Reinforce your little fold ups. Okay, right now we we need. To work out <clears throat> where we want our handle now I think it's gonna sit best like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little pencil line there like that and I'm gonna line up the other one do a little pencil line like that. Typical. Can't see that pencil line. So let's do that again. If you want to measure it, then obviously you can measure it. Okay, so there's my two lines. Now this board is really, really thick. So you will struggle to put a hole punch or anything like that through it unless you have got major muscles. So what I did last time and I'm going to do again is I'm going to use my pokey thing and I'm just going to mark where I want it. Okay. And then I'm going to take my awl that I use for sewing my signatures in and I'm going to go for it and push through and I know I went through because I had to pull it out of the board there we go okay so you can see there we've gone through so just go back the other way make a nice hole back the other way like so now you can make a little hole in your handle making sure you've got it nicely in the middle like so and then I have got two little tiny brads okay just put a little bit of ink on that edge okay 
I'm going to glue around my bread for extra support. Whoops. And I'm going to line that under that hole. Okay. Do exactly the same on the other one. I'll sink it up first. Ink round your bread hole. Line it up. And pop it down. Okay, and there's your handle. So now we're going to put our brad through. Pull your paper forward because you don't want to poke your brad through your paper. And just poke your brad home on both sides. Like so. Open, whoops. Open your bread up, press it flat on both sides, obviously. No point doing one and not the other. Like that. And now what we need to do is put a little bit of tape over that to make sure it doesn't scratch through our paper. So I'm just going to put a bit of tape across there and one whoops that might stick out beyond our paper and one piece on there just to protect the paper from the bread spikes okay now obviously every time you do it it's going to get flattened but that is just the way of the world. Okay. And now we are going to glue up the rest of this inside. In that and then coming all the way around that edge So, don't worry if you've got a bit of extra glue, that'll rub off. And then you need to press and fold all at the same time, if that makes sense. So, have a little press and then. Oh, we haven't got... See, this glue is driving me insane today. I'm going to pull it up gently. And I'm going to go for the trusty prick stick because this is silly. Trusty prick stick never lets me down. Yeah, look, works every time. I don't know why I don't just stick with it, to be honest with you. So then you've got that one. And then you've got, we have got a bubble there though. That's that. There you go. So there, give it a little gentle fold, 
Don't be too forceful with it. Don't want any more cracking than we've already got. There we go. And then this one. And that's about there you go and there ladies don't worry about your handle because you can just bend that all back look see and there is the basic bag okay you need to deal with this but that's fine just like that yeah so obviously we need a closure but we also need our spine so we're going to line our spine up okay and if you can see that that is marginally too big so I'm going to trim that on the guillotine because I don't want it outside my spine been a really long video today those of you that are still here are truly committed that's for sure Okay, so I'm literally, I'm sticking with my prick stick now. I'm done with gloopy glue. Run all the way across there. Okay, obviously not on that upstand. Bring your book back. Put your... right on that crease that's where you want it right on that crease line okay and then bring that one to make sure where is that crease i'm just opening it up pressing it all down Pushing it to the right and then pushing it all to the left. Make sure it's all properly closed. There you go. So they are your three upstands. Just make sure that glue's set. There you go. Right, so I'm going to leave you there because I think you have you've been here for long enough, and I think what we need to do is come back and do video two on our closure and our insides. 
so as always thank you so much especially today it's been a bit of an endurance test thank you so much for being with me also that needs to set i hope you now understand how that all went together and i look forward to seeing what you made with yours stay safe happy crafting bye for now